Hey there YouTube, this is Octopus, and today I'm going to help you make your very first Minecraft plugin. So we're going to be using a program called uh, Craft Bucket with Spigot. Now if you haven't heard of these, Craft Bucket uh, was created some time ago for custom Minecraft servers, multiplayer servers and single player servers I suppose if you want to do it by yourself and mod it out to basically add gameplay features that weren't in the game before using only the basic mechanics Minecraft provided. Now uh, it used to be unofficial but at this point Minecraft and Mojang have embraced the plugin community and multiplayer servers abound. So if you want to make your server better uh, all you have to do is learn to code a few plugins in the Java coding language and once you've got that done I mean you know you're pretty much ready to make the server any way you want. Uh, using Java documentation, of course, you gotta always check up your, your stuff before you use it. Alright, um, so let's just jump right into it. Um, now this is an important step because if you don't set up your Eclipse correctly, your plugin may not operate as intended and may even corrupt your server. Uh, there are other ways to make plugins, of course, you don't have to use the Eclipse IDE, there are other IDEs out there. But, uh, I mean, pretty much everyone uses Eclipse, so your best bet is that. So first thing you're going to do is open your web browser. You can see I have Chrome open here. And you're going to go to Eclipse.org right here. Check out the URL. Nice and simple. Uh, the Eclipse website is open source. Open source means, you know, you can see the code yourself. You can work on it. You can add to it. You can change it. You know, uh, totally available. Open source is wonderful. If you make a plugin, I suggest going open source with the plugin, though you're certainly not obligated to do so. Alright, so scroll on over to the download section. Uh, wherever you see this button that says download, you might uh, see a different page here if you come later after, after maybe a couple months or a year into the video. So just find where it says download, click that, find where it says get eclipse. Now the name may not be neon as it is currently. Uh, it may change to something else, uh, starting with an O or a P and so forth. But just find where you can download the packages for just Eclipse. You don't want Che or Orion or any of this stuff. Just download packages for Eclipse. Find the one you want. You're, you're looking for Eclipse IDE for Java developers. You're not looking for Java EE. You're not looking for C, all this. You're looking for Java Eclipse IDE. Nice and simple. It's, uh, right here you can find the 32-bit and 64-bit for Windows. If you've got some trouble um, downloading this, you can look up, you know, some tutorials on Google. That's kind of out of the scope of this one. I'm just going to show you how to do it real quick. So once you've got it downloaded, uh, you're going to go ahead and make sure you have the Java. Uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Java JDK. You're going to want to go to Oracle.com. Just Oracle.com ought to do it for you right here. Go to the download section and find Java SE. You're going to want to make sure you have uh, JDK 8. You're going to look around. You can see JDK. You can download it. It's usually right here, the latest version. JDK 8 is currently the latest version. Maybe you want to upgrade if it goes higher after this video. That's up to you. All right. And finally, you're going to make sure you have build tools. Uh, if you already have a Minecraft server, you may not necessarily need to do it with build tools. But if you're creating a new one, say for testing purposes or for actual plugins for people to join, you need build tools, all right? Because that's how you get Craft Bucket Spigot. Uh, technically, you can't get Craft Bucket through a direct download. Uh, that's why you need the tools to build it, <laughs> and that's where the name comes from. Uh, Spigot also comes with it, so it kind of just sets up your whole server folder for you wherever you want. So once you've got that going, you can directly install the plugins to that folder, and you're good to go. Uh, so, you know, you can read here at spigotmc.org slash wiki slash build tools. That will take you to this page, follow the instructions. I know it looks like a lot, but you really only need the section. Uh, let's see. You only need... <laughs> Gotta find it here. Here it is, the link. Running build tools. You can download this. And, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory after that. It opens a little you know, graphic user interface, you go ahead and download it, create the folder, boom, you're good to go. Uh, so basically once you've got all these downloaded, you're going to want to open up Eclipse wherever you downloaded that and make sure you select a good folder for your workspace. That's where all of these projects here will be stored. Um, 
once you've got a you won't you won't have all these projects it'll actually be blank for you you kind of have like a blank version of this screen here what you're going to want to do is you're going to do file new java project right there at the top nice and simple go ahead and click that and you're going to be prompted into a project name i suggest something really simple um let's say hello world can't go wrong there hello world 2 um, I'm gonna add the two because I think I already created a hello world folder um, you can name it whatever you want if you want to name it after a plugin you intend to make go ahead uh, make sure you've got the right Java version it should already be set to that it should be all ready to go so you just hit finish here and it will create your hello world project so you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure you right click this here after you have run build tools so yeah go ahead and run your build tools first after you've run it it should look a little something like this when you click the executable or whatever it is um, you'll go ahead and run build tools make sure it's on the latest version of minecraft or the correct one you want and it'll create a build tools folder in which you have all of your server stuff here you're looking you, you got your run file here um, that accesses these jars and these jar files are what run the server craft bucket um, jar file here spigot jar file here you can see I got several versions you may only have one you may have several you just look for the one you want to use go ahead and remember where this location is alright and then go ahead and open Eclipse back up you want to find your project right click here click build path and scroll over to add external archives I know this is a bit of a doozy but just keep up here and you should be fine um, and you're gonna want to find and you're gonna want to find your build tools folder with all your jar files in it and find the ones you want to use for both craft bucket and spigot they should match and you need one of each if you want to do spigot uh, programming so go ahead and click craft bucket go ahead and import that there build path add external archive add the spigot version as well you can see we've got our reference libraries here now we can create a package what we're going to do is click your folder, right click it here, click new, and scroll to package. Now your package name, I usually keep them the same for all of my plugins. I don't know if there's anything useful for changing them. So what you're going to do is probably follow this format here. It's nice and simple. A lot of people seem to do it. Uh, if I've got it wrong, please let me know. <laughs> it's uh, just reverse URL format. So say com, com, dot. Um, if you've got a website, you might enter it here in reverse URL format. If not, you just think of maybe a nickname, like mine is Kraken. You could be whatever you want, numbers, letters, I'm sure you could probably get away with a whole lot of symbols there. Uh, com.kraken, and you're going to want to name it after the plugin. It has, does have to be unique, so um, when I say I make it the same, I always use the same com.kraken, but you will need to make the very end of it unique here com dot kraken hello world 2 so you can see I've created a unique one using my basis here sorry for any confusion and go ahead and hit finish there you go you've now got an empty package you're going to want to click that package and go to create a new class right perfect alright so this new class is you name it whatever you want um, you may name it hello world 2 after the plugin itself I do that a lot I like to name them after the plugins name but um, probably the best way is just name it main that would be your main class this is where we're going to be doing a lot of the coding in go ahead and click that and you'll add the main.java to your package now you can see the icons changed it's got a class in it and we've got the basic um, class here it's got your package um, declaration here at the top you shouldn't mess with that unless you change the package uh, or you know you can add it to another plugin here somewhere and then you have your main uh, method here alright so we're gonna change this up a little bit 
we're going to be referencing um, some pre-made plugins here. So I'll be looking at that to kind of give you an idea of how you would go about doing this. So first off, you're going to take a look here at my voice box plugin main class. It's got a whole lot of junk in it. I know. Just uh, ignore it. We're basically looking at a couple of these parts up here. You see you got the imports and for every time you want to add something in here you're gonna have to import a little package here. Alright, so say I want to know where the location of players are, I'm gonna need the import for location. You only have to import it once and once it's at the top you can get locations for just about anything. Um, and so forth, you can see there's a few of them here, you may not recognize them. Uh, Bucky, you may recognize chat colors, pretty straightforward. Um, next up we got right here the declaration for our method alright so it's going to be the name of the class here main public class main matches the name of the file I think that makes it nice and easy extends Java plugin so we're gonna have to go ahead and import Java plugin you can see it, it has a similar package name to ours org bucket plugin Java Java plugin it goes a little deeper than ours and so it has a little longer but when it has a little red squiggly line under something it means you need an import it doesn't recognize it uh, you right click the name of it and it'll you know bring you that little list I showed you for the import so let's go ahead and do that one more time this is an important step to get down you want to make sure you know how to do this you see the little red squiggly line you hover over it you can click it uh, and then hover over it as well I found that helps and you'll see Java plugin cannot be resolved to a type that's a pretty standard error it doesn't know what's going on here Ignore these guys, you don't need these little links. All you need to know is import Java plugin. Perfect. See, it automatically imports it based on the craft bucket and spigot files we put in here before. These jar files contain all of these possible coding uh, methods, basically, uh, and classes for us to use, and uh, we don't have to create our own using basic Java. So it kind of hooks into Minecraft and lets us roll right off the bat. Makes it easy. You'll see why soon. Next up, we're going to need to do the on enable. This is a really important part. All of your plugins will have this. I'll explain it here. This is kind of what this looks like. At override, you're going to want to start with that before you on enable. You need it. Honestly, I don't know why. Um, I've never done anything else with overrides, so my apologies. You'll just have to look in that for you. Uh, for yourself and then we've got the actual on enable method all right so you put the on enable here it should have nothing it should be blank right here all you need is just public void on enable and your brackets all right this could be totally blank you don't need this here um, but I like to send a message to my console whenever I enable it so let's say hello world 2 that's our, our plugin right now when it enables the server we're gonna get the logger um, that's uh, kinda like the console command window you'll see it here in a second and it gives a little um, info line it's called info it kind of, it's kinda kinda like a message to the console you put this in and whatever you type in between the quotation marks is what will show up in your console when you start up the server alright so we'll take a look at that that'll verify that our plugin is working as intended um, and the next step we'll actually need is a on disable. You see, we've got another one here, very similar. It's just named on disable instead of on enable. This one, not really as necessary, but I like to do it as well. It kind of wraps the whole thing up very nicely, gives it gives it sort of a professional sort of feel. And you'll need it in the future on enable, on disable. You'll need it for um you know closing out your plugin saving things or loading values from a, a config file that's something we'll do later so you're gonna need these two to help you do that for now it'll suffice that they just sent messages uh, I suggest you have them for all of your plugins too it's just good practice that good practice to do alright so now we're kinda of done with that we can work from it from here we've got our uh, imports we've got our main method here alright that's perfect and now all we need to do is learn how to actually turn it into a plugin. I know this doesn't look like much and it really won't do much to the server, but this will actually run a plugin for us. 
and send us these two messages when we start and stop. We do that just by finding uh, the package or the I'm sorry the project here, right clicking the plugin and hitting export. Here it is. You need to remember this step. This is very important. This will affect whether or not your plugin actually works. You need to install it correctly. So let's get this right. You hit export. You want to make sure the drop down file for Java is on jar file. Should automatically do that, but if not, double check it because what you're looking for is the jar file here, right? So you can see maybe you have this screen here. Click the arrow next to Java. Click jar file. Boom. Don't click runnable. Don't check, don't click Java doc. No. All right. Next step. You can see we have all the projects here. I have a lot because I've been working on a lot, but if you just have the one, then it'll just show that there. Make sure the black box is, select, is selected. You can select other ones, but don't do that. All right, that's kind of out of the scope of this tutorial if you've got other ones here. All right, so just make sure the black box is there. It should be automatic. You're not going to want either of the project or class path. Um, you're going to want to unclick those. And now I've <laughs> remembered we do need one more file before we go. So let me stop that right there. We're going to need to actually right click, hit new, and create a file here. All right, and it needs to be a text file right, named plugin.yml. There we go. Plugin.yml. This is actually very important, almost as important, if not arguably as important as the main class, because this will have the information that is plain text readable. For your plugin. We're going to go ahead and click plugin here. There we go. And we're going to want to copy this here. You don't have this file. I'm just getting it here for a template. All right. So you can see we have the first step is we're going to, need to put in the name of the plugin. Our plugin is Hello World 2. You may have a different name, whatever it is. You go ahead and put that in there. Next one up is our main. You need to have these, by the way, so don't skip any of this. You need to have name, main. Main will tell you where the plugin main um, class is located. So you see we have the main Java here. Just com, kraken, or whatever your name is, dot hello world two dot main. All right. So this is the package. Com, kraken, hello world two. Got to make sure they're exactly the same, by the way very important. Pacing is, is important here. Dot main. So it's package with the main name added to it. Whatever you name this main class is what you're going to have to add here after Hello World 2. Perfect. All right. So that's good. Next up, we're going to need the version number here. And this can change. This can change pretty much however you want it to. Just kind of indicates where you are in the setup. So, I mean, for now, I suggest maybe just doing 1.0. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, this will show up whenever you have a, a startup on the console to tell you what version it is. Um, people can check it and so forth. Uh, not really a big deal. You might not even need to include it. I'm not sure. I say just include it just to make sure. So we're going to do commands, and then we're going to enter. There's going to be nothing after the word commands. All right, so it's just going to be a line here. And then this is going to create a, this space here creates a, a child node, all right? Now, these are parent nodes. You don't really need to know this, but this is, it's good to kind of just have this information. And the child nodes of parent nodes will kind of, you know, give it value, I guess, inherit the values. So any commands you want to add to your plugin, you're going to have to add here. For now, we don't have any. So you don't add, need to add anything, you can kind of just leave it blank, I suppose. Um, and you're good to go, all right? This is kind of what your, your basic setup should look like. So once you've got that, you've saved it all, make sure you save it constantly. I used to see I'm clicking save here all the time. You can also do control S to save it. You right click your uh, plugin and do export again. So we're gonna go through this step, make sure it's all Java jar file. Click next, make sure this is automatically selected, your plugin name. And you want to uncheck class path and project. You don't need those. I don't know why they're there. You don't need them. <laughs> Just go for plugin.yml. You do need to make sure plugin.yml is checked every time and nothing else. All right. So these boxes should look roughly the same. If they're not, 
I guess make them, you know, check them until they are the same. So they should be set the same way. And you're going to want to find your, your class path here. Now you can see I've got a lot here. Yours may be pretty much empty. So you just find the path for this folder right here, your plugins folder. So you've got your actual server folder, right? And you got the build tools folder. And you have plugins. And this is where they will be directly installed. The jar files will just be put in here and they're ready to go once you start up the the Minecraft um, game client, it'll run the plugins automatically. Or the server client, or whatever, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so you're going to want to make sure you have that class path, class path. If you want, you can just right click where it says plugins here and copy address as text. I believe that should do it. Right click here and hit paste. Boom. There you go. But you're not just going to want to install it directly to the plugins folder. You're going to want to make sure, oops, got to re add that back in. You want to make sure that after plugins we have a backslash and the name of our plugin, our jar file. Hello World 2, make sure it's the name the same name as um, the plugin itself. I, I find that helps uh, to avoid confusion. And I believe .jar is necessary. Yep, you add .jar after the end, so it'll kind of look like this. And from now on, whenever you want to install a plugin um, via Eclipse that you made yourself, all you have to do is come here and change the name from hello world 2 to whatever it is say example plugin and boom you can hit finish and install example plugin just make sure you have the correct um, settings selected here so let's go back to hello world 2 because that's the one we're installing good to go it looks like it's all in the right folders hit finish you'll go ahead and really quickly install it it may say something like watch I'll do it again here real quick you don't have to do this this is just an example say I already have it installed like I just finished it um, recently and I want to install it again because I've updated it or who knows what or I've got a plugin with the same name perhaps it'll give me this confirm replace the file such and such already exists you want to overwrite it if you hit yes it'll resave over so you only have this copy of the plugin with this name so make sure that you don't name plugins the same thing your jar files all have to have different names even if the projects have the same name or if they're the same project um, and if you want to update it, you will have to override it every single time, yes. So just get used to pressing the S button on here. <laughs> so, yep, there you go. And now your plugin's been installed. You can go here to your plugins folder, and there it is. Hello World 2. It's got a kind of a little Java symbol, right, for the jar file. Now we want to see it in action. We can go ahead and go to the folder here and hit Run. Now, if you're, um, you may have like a start.exe instead of, um, or I'm sorry, start, yeah, start.bat or something like that instead of mine, which is run.bat, um, this run file here. Whatever it is, um, you'll probably have to look up how to make a run file or a start file. That's kind of outside the scope of this tutorial. Um, you can kind of see mine here as an example if you want to take from it, I suppose. So you go ahead and start up your server that way by hitting the run file and you'll give it a second here while it loads up all of our fun stuff I've only got the one plugin here and it looks like hello world 2 loading hello world 2 version 1.0 and we got our unenable message enabling hello world 2 hello world 2 has been enabled perfect there you go um, I could join the server if I wanted, but um, since there's really nothing on it, and it's just kind of a blank server with no plugin for now, I suppose that will suffice. Now, um, say you want to send another message. This doesn't, you know, suit you. You want to send a little custom message or something. Go ahead and start our server. We can do stop here. By the way, you just type it straight into the console window, and it stops your server. Perfect. And you don't want to do that every time. Um, you can actually upload plugins and just type in, uh, I believe it's restart or reload, sorry, reload with Spigot, and it will reload the entire server with the new plugin settings. But that can kind of mess with your setting, your plugins after a while. Um, when you get really advanced, it'll really throw you some, some pretty crazy errors. So I suggest stopping your server every time you want to add a new plugin. Unless you're getting really into it and you know it's not going to throw any errors, then you know more power to you. Blast through it all you want with the reloads. 
<laughs> just a word from the wise. All right, so let's add a new message to it. And this is not really that great. This is kind of a boring message. We're going to say, let's say my name's Kraken, right? We're going to say, hey, Kraken, have a good day. It's a very nice thing for the plugin to say to me. I kind of like, you know, that. So we're going to export it again. Everything seems to be set already. Perfect. Get rid of those two useless files. Hit finish. Yes, I do want to overwrite. And start up the file again. Or I mean the server. Here we go. Let it load up here for a second. There we go. We got loading. I mean, we're going in. Hey, Kraken, have a good day. That's, thank you, server. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. And that's your very first plugin. <laughs> Pretty simple, huh? Um, though it doesn't do anything in the game, it does actually consist as a plugin. All right, perfect. So um, next up, we're going to go a little more advanced. We're going to do what's called a listener class, and that will allow you to actually affect things that are happening in the game instead of just in the console window. Uh, so, you know, they'll get, things will get a little more interesting. You'll be able to do the things you're hopefully looking for. This is just kind of a setup video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Uh, or if you want to send me a personal message on here, Twitter, or whatever, it's all good. Feel free to let me know. I know I kind of ran over this really quickly, but this is this is just kind of an introductory video and honestly not, not really all that fun. <laughs> All right. Um, you, you can find plenty of guides on how to do this elsewhere on the internet. If this really didn't help you out, um, you can Google. Um, there's a few guys on YouTube actually, so you can look them up as well. I'll probably go ahead and link them in the annotations here somewhere. You may see a message for it. You can check them out. Um, if you, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Have a good one.